You are welcome to another video of Juniper Security Associate course. In this section, we will see how to configure Juniper SRX anti-spam feature, another feature of UTM section. It detects and then blocks or tags spam emails. The detection is based on a cloud-based Juniper spam blacklist or a locally configured blacklist. As you know, Juniper SRX UTM has four features. In the previous section, we discussed the antivirus feature. In this section, we will discuss anti-spam feature. Content filtering and web filtering are discussed in the next sections. Uniper SRX anti-spam feature is to detect and then block or tag spam emails. It checks the source IP address of the sending SMTP server and also the email address of the sender of incoming and outgoing emails. If the IP address or email addresses have a bad reputation in the spam blacklist database, then they will be detected as spam emails. Spam blacklist database can be a cloud-based Juniper blacklist or a local and manually configured blacklist. Detected spam emails can be blocked or we can just tag the email header or email subject with a custom string. The configuration of SRX anti-spam feature is very similar to antivirus that we have discussed in the previous section. In the first step, we have to enable anti-spam feature. In the second step, which is optional, we configure an anti-spam profile. This is optional because by default, there is a pre-configured profile in Juniper SRX device. In the profile, we add any local or cloud-based spam blacklist database. We also configure the action to be taken for detected spam emails. As we have talked, the actions can be to block spam emails or just tag the emails. Then we configure the anti-spam policy. In the anti-spam policy, we only call the desired anti-spam profile. And in the last step, anti-spam policy must be called in any desired security policy. To configure Juniper SRX anti-spam feature, we start with enabling anti-spam feature in the device. This feature requires a license. I used 30 days trial license just to show you how to configure it. With the command show system license, you can make sure that the anti-spam license is already activated in the device, as you can see. Then with command, set security utm default configuration and anti-spam and then type we have the options to enable cloud-based sophos antivirus feature or just disable the anti-spam feature here i enabled a juniper cloud-based sophos anti-spam feature and then commit then we can optionally configure an anti-spam profile. In the profile, we can enable multiple spam detection database, which can be a cloud-based software server or a local whitelist and blacklist, which can be created manually with the command set security UTM feature profile anti-spam SPL and then profile. First, we choose a name for the profile here. I choose the name. Then, with the option SPL default server, we enable cloud-based blacklist database as the first option. And then commit. If you want to add also local database, first you have to create local blacklist or whitelist database based on ip address domain name url patterns which also support wildcard here i have created a blacklist with the name of blacklist and a whitelist with the name of whitelist based on different options just to show you the possibilities then we add these databases to the profile anti-spam profile these databases are added to the cloud-based Sophos database that we have already configured. Then copy and paste. And again, 
commit. In the anti-spam profile, we can also configure the actions to be taken against the spam emails with choosing the parameter spam actions in the above command. We have the options to block spam or just tag the emails with a custom string. Here I've written two examples just to show the both options. In the third step, we configure anti-spam policy. There are not a lot to configure in the policy. We just configure the default or one of the manually configured anti-spam profile, which must be used in the anti-spam processing. Here I create a policy with the name of anti-spam policy one. There are two options for the profile, Jonas AS default, or Jonas anti-spam default profile. And the other option is anti-spam profile, which we have just configured. In our example, I choose the configure anti-spam profile and then commit. In the last step, we enable the configure anti-spam policy in the existing security policy from untrust zone to the trust zone, there is a default policy with the name of default permit that we have configured in the previous section, which permit everything. At the end of then command, then permit, we add anti-spam UTM policy application service, UTM policy and anti-spam policy one. Let's copy the configuration and then paste and then commit. After committing, we can check with the command show configuration security policies from zone on trust to zone trust. And as you can see, UTM policy on TSPAM policy one is added to the security policy. These are all the configuration that we need to configure to start using anti-spam feature in the Juniper SRX device. And to make sure that the anti-spam feature is correctly configured and it is inspecting incoming and outgoing emails, there are two main monitoring commands with the command show security UTM and then anti-spam status. You can make sure that the anti-spam feature is activated and which spam block database is used. And with the command show security UTM anti-spam statistics instead of status, you can follow how many connections are inspected and how many spams are detected.